guest presenter, and uh, that's Maria for today. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from, and anything else you'd like to add, you can copy the chat box at the end because generally there's lots of information there. Uh, we're going to get started, so we don't take any time. Our speaker is coming to us from Spain, and that's Maria J. Garcia San Martin. And a little bit about uh, Maria, who's a very passionate educator and an amazing teacher trainer, and she's got something special for everyone. And it's always a surprise, to tell you the truth. Uh, Maria always surprises me because there's so much learning in what she does. She's head of uh, the online teacher training, experimentation, and social networks unit at the National Institute for Educational Technologies and Teacher Training, INTEF, in the Spanish Ministry of Education. She has a master's degree in Teach for Teachers at, from the University of uh, Rey Juan Carlos, URJC, in Madrid. She's had over uh, 30 years' experience um, teaching English as a second uh, language to teachers at various levels and private centers, state schools of languages. She's coordinated various teacher training and educational resources projects. Uh, she's also uh, broadcasted educational series of podcasts for the state-run network. As you can see, she's been very, very busy uh, with technology and education. She's managed the national blog on IT and foreign languages. And I highly recommend that you follow her blog, Stop and Learn English. Um, and she's also um, had experience with education open resources um, for the Ministry of Education. She's also an experienced uh, user of WizIQ. She's presented a number of times. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> let me uh, give uh, Maria uh, the mic because uh, she had it before. But uh, she came in as um, a teacher with my name under her name, so that wasn't a good idea. So Maria, if you could uh, raise your hand, it'll. Oh, I found you. Hello. Well, it's starting to be very, very hot in Madrid this afternoon. Uh, so I, I see just you've got your hair, to, a new hairstyle. Uh, get a ponytail in the meantime uh, to be able to present properly for the la uh, for the next hours. Um, thank you very, very much, Dr. Nelly, as usual, for your warm uh, introduction. Um, but today, the uh, real presenters are going to be my beginner teachers who are all coming in live uh, one by one. I can see some of them already in the attendees list. And um, they are the um, actual ones who are going to be on the spot today. Uh, to talk about open educational digital projects for CLIL primary education. Um, these talks that you are going to be hearing for the next uh, minutes um, are by this bunch of beginner teachers who have been uh, studying a master's degree in university for the last months. And uh, I have been teaching ICT and web resources to them since February, and they all the online course has been set up in Moodle. That's why we are here, so you can see the relationship between the LMS, the Moodle LMS, and uh, the different and varied uh, kinds of teaching that you can do from Moodle into any other uh, kind of web resources and different digital spaces. And they are today here to present their learning journeys the journeys that they have been um, traveling through for the last uh, four months, uh, really. February, March, April, and May. We are just about to finish the master's degree in a week. And they have come up with really um, nice digital products that I think you are going to enjoy. So I am going to be invisible very soon. I'm going to hide myself. And I will be passing the microphone and the webcam to 
uh, these beginner teachers who are all ready now in the uh, room to present their achievements. So I think I'm going to go to the next slide and uh, Maria Jose is there already. So I don't know, Dr. Nelly, if I can pass the microphone and the webcam to her or if you have to do it. I can, right? Yes, okay, I can do that. So, let me see, because I cannot find the way now. I found it the other day on our rehearsal, but uh, maybe I don't know if I've got enough permits because uh, I cannot really see the buttons that I usually see. Sorry about that. Yes, Maria Jose is there. She's saying, I'm there, I'm there. Yes, I can see I can see you, Maria Jose, on the attendee list, but I cannot pass you the microphone. Uh, um, Maria, uh, can you hear me? You should be able to do it because uh, you have editing rights, but, you know, you've got all the rights. But if you don't see the edit button, uh, maybe you can uh, log out and come back with the other link if it's not too much trouble and then um, it'll be much faster if uh, you find your uh, students. What do you think? Okay, 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 I will do that. I cannot find it today. I don't Neither know do why. I. Uh, but I can, I can, I don't, don't worry. I'll go, but I will be you in a minute. Yes, yes, Maria. <laughs> I'm going out and I'm, I'm coming yeah, back. Yeah, that's faster. right. Okay. Yeah, let okay. me just. It won't be I'll explain while uh Okay, okay. So criteria such as content and knowledge, organization of the project. The next challenge I did was analyze and evaluate an educational project that I chose from a few. Once I knew more about it, I started designing my own prototype of open educational project. It was a first approach to the project, which I called was the weather like and it aimed to students of first grade of primary education in the area of English. After deciding the topic for my project, which is the weather, the next challenge was to design an online visual metaphor to explain how I was going to turn my open educational project into a collaborative one. So the next step after my visual metaphor was to look for partners for my project. So I visited some collaborative running projects where mine could fit in. Finally, I chose the SL signs and I recorded an elevator pitch to let them know that I wanted to collaborate with them. I chose the SL signs because it offers many activities in which you can collaborate such as news, service, text or comics. So after looking for partners, I turned some simple activities into super learning missions. In this way, students could carry out a meaningful learning. For this, I chose two of the activities from my open uh, educational project. As for, my, as for my first super learning mission, what I wanted 
my students to do in this mission is a poster with a program called Canva in which they have to put the names and pictures of different cities in the world as well as put the weather in, in, in each one at the same hour. This is activities related to the real world. As for the second super learning mission, I did this mission in collaboration with my classmate Paula, since we chose the same collaborative project, DSL Time. The first thing we did was mix our topics, landscapes, and the weather, and think of a possible mission that could be carried out, keeping in mind that this mission should have a connection with the real world and should draw the attention of a student. Finally, the, the idea chosen was pollution because it's a social issue which involves the damage of the landscapes and the change of the weather. The student has to create a presentation with a maze explaining the key points about one kind of pollution, such as air pollution. And finally, create a comic with six stones which show all the information. Other challenge was to create a rubric in order to evaluate one of my super learning missions, in which I took into account several criteria, such as content and knowledge, organization, effort, mechanics and grammar, and design of digital artifacts. Finally, this live conference is my last and most important challenge, and it's my first live talk ever. So this is the whole learning process that I have had in this subject and which I have followed to create my open educational project. I have to say that the ICD subject has taught me a lot of useful things which I will practice in my future as a teacher since we have to promote the use of ICT. So I hope you like it and thank you very much for listening. Bye bye. Thank you, Maria Jose. Thank you very much for your presentation. We are now moving to Anna. Uh, Anna, I think, I don't know if she's there. Are you there, Anna? If you are there, please say so through the chat box. Yes, uh, I have found you now. So I'm going to mute my Hello, camera. hello, everybody. Yes, and okay, welcome, thank you. Anna. So, Anna, hello. My name is Ana Elena Herrera Garcia, and I'm a student from the uh, Juan, Rey Juan Carlos University in Madrid, in Spain. And my reason of being here is because I had the chance and the opportunity to uh, to uh, go through this subject, ICT subject. Um, I have to say that it's been a wonderful experience. And I had I, I had ICT in during my degree, but it wasn't really good because uh, everything was uh, in groups and I I couldn't learn too much. Uh, I consider ICT a relevant subject and aspect in that society because it is in continuous changing, and we have to adapt our methodology to to the society, not the other way around. Um, this uh, uh, way of communication is uh, an advantage for that society because we use ICT all the time, for example, uh, to, communicate, to, to communicate to each other or uh, to create a learning diary and so on. Uh, the ICT subject in, Ray, in the Ray Juan Carlos University it gives you an opportunity to improve and learn a lot of contents about the, the new technologies and the ICT. Uh, this subject is structured in different challenges and you have to move on through them and the difficulty in the challenge is increasing. Uh, even though it is a good subject, I have to say that uh, every good subject has a good teacher behind. So this teacher is uh, Maria Jesus, and I have to say uh, thank you to her because uh, she, uh, if I have to define her, I would say that uh, 
she she's patient, very patient, and you can ask uh, all the doubts or concerns that you have uh, many times because she's she's be able to to answer you all the time. She's patient. Um, well, I'm going to talk about my uh, open educational project now. As I said before, uh, uh, this subject is structured in different challenges. And the first one uh, was to open a uh, learning diary. And that's important because it allowed us, allow us to uh, record all our progress and post uh, all the challenges. Secondly, uh, we had to analyze, evaluate, and present a reference open educational project uh, that was useful uh, because uh, I could check how other projects work and how they, they were structured. Uh, thirdly, I had to prototype my open educational project and my topic was dietitian discretion. And it was easier for me because I could uh, check the the other projects in the previous challenge. Um, fourthly, uh, I, we have to design a um, uh, visual metaphor. That means that we have to uh, turn our project into a collaborative one, uh, fomenting collaboration, fostering collaboration. Uh, fifthly, we have to look for a, a partner to collaborate with, and I have chosen uh, No Me Cuentes Historias, Dibujamelas. That means do not tell me stories, uh, draw them. And it is an a, a important and amazing project because they foster a, 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 the acquisition of content through adding drawing. That's important because we have some students, students in our class, class with a visual a thinking, so we have to, to support them. Um, so thank you very much for your pro project, Dibujamelas. And the next challenge uh, was to turn our, our activities into a super learning missions. I had the good luck to collaborate with another uh, classmate. Her name is Andrea. Uh, we mix our uh, knowledge to create super, le super learning missions. Uh, we use the program SPLI and uh, Scratch Junior uh, to create a, pres create a presentation. And the next challenge was to um, create, a, a, to design a assessment rubric. And I think that you have to take into account what do you want to evaluate and what do you want from your students. And also you have to assess yourself. So uh, that's it. That's uh, my uh, presentation. I hope you like it. And thank you for, for that opportunity. Thank you very much, Anna. Our Anna. pleasure. Thank you. I After, yes, I will uh, mute your uh, microphone now and uh, your webcam, and we are moving to Carmen, who I have seen in the uh, chat there already. I know that you are there because you are writing. Uh, so I'm trying to find you, Carmen. If you uh, if you can uh, um, raise your hand so that I can uh, find you uh, quicker. Yes. Uh, so there we go. Um, only a minute. She's just um, gone again. Um, Okay, Carmen, I found you now. Uh, if you accept the uh, um, permit, Carmen, I'm just trying to uh, pass you webcam and uh, microphone. Uh, uh, so there we go. So all yours. Thank you, Carmen. Okay. Hello, my name is Carmen. I'm a general teacher of primary education from Madrid. First of all, I would like to share my experience with ICT. 
Before some months ago, I didn't use any social networks apart from Facebook. I, uh, I found them complicated and unnecessary, but actually I use Facebook as a means of getting in touch with friends and sharing and reading articles about education. Indeed, I was scared of uh, sharing my private life with uh, everybody. But now, after some months, uh, I realized that uh, social networks are helpful when you use them to learn meaningful facts. In my case, uh, things related to education, such as new methods or new techniques, and so on. The first day in our ICT model, most of us um, felt uncomfortable using ICD tools. Thinking about this, I, I think that this fact was a result of our poor uh, learning process at the schools as a consequence of uh, traditional teaching techniques. Because we just left school five years ago, more or less, and there were computers there, but we just used them to uh, to learn how to write on the computer or to create graphs. And nowadays we are experiencing the same process here in Spain because children just use the computers to play games about the content or to create PowerPoints. It's something that we would like to change nowadays because uh, children were born in the digital age. So I became open-minded during this month and I consider completely necessary the daily use of ICT in the classroom. I made up my mind as a result of a long process and working so hard on my ICT model. We had to create our own open educational projects in order to contribute and share knowledge with teachers from any country. In my opinion, sharing uh, knowledge is vital if we want to improve as teachers. Last year, I didn't know what an open educational project was, and now I am conscious about the idea that there are many teachers who are sharing their fresh ideas on the internet. Um, apart from that, I reckon that creating an open educational project involves many days and, and working so hard on it, because we have to take into, call, into account what you will do, uh, how you are going to do it, what are the children's interests or the children's aid, the environment, the materials, and many, many things. Apart from that, I, I would like to speak a little bit about my open educational project, which is called Plants. I thought that I should have changed the name into a more original one, but I want teachers to recognize the main topic of my project at a glance. So the appealing part of my project is not its name, but its content. It's true that uh, nowadays people are quite individualist because they were touched in an individual way and children are not motivated. That's why I created a project in which uh, children will work cooperatively and they will be so motivated because they love technological gadgets and they will constantly use them. My project follows the Spanish curriculum but can be adapted to, uh, to any country. As well as that, uh, I want uh, students to accomplish a series of super learning missions. The lessons will be more hands-on and moving. And besides, the teacher uh, will use infographics instead of the boring textbook. The environment will be also different because it won't be it will be, it will it won't be the the classroom. It will be uh, the school playground and a botanical garden. And last but not least, uh, my students will collaborate using three different ways. They will collaborate because they will work in groups. They will collaborate with a foreign classroom. And they will ask for collaboration to a professional. As I consider that spreading the word is so important, the students will uh, will write posts about their own learning process with the, with the teacher's supervision. This action has many advantages, and I will tell you why. One of them is that parents can see what their children do at the school. Another one is that um, students feel proud about showing what they have done. 
And the last one is that we can share our good and bad experiences with the, com the educational community. As you will see in my blog, rocktheblueplanet.blogger.com.s, my open educational project is constantly changing and improving. This blog is about uh, my own learning process and it's about changing people's minds with respect to be environmentally friendly. That is why my project is about plants, because we need to raise uh, awareness of taking care of plants and the environment. It's a pity because I am a pre-service teacher and I couldn't put in this project into practice, but I hope that next year I will do it when I will be working. But at this time, I challenge you to put it into practice if you like, to say that I'm collaborating with two worldwide educational projects, which are the 30 Goals Challenge and Infoedugrafias. The 30 Goals Challenge is a website carried by the teacher who challenges a teacher with 30 goals a year, while Infoedugrafias is a blog in which teacher, teachers can upload their infographics or the infographics that their students have done. Both of them are challenging teachers to change their traditional, the traditional methods. Well, that's all about me and about my project. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Carmen. That was very, very Thank good. You. Thank you. I'm very proud of you all. I'm, I'm sure you will very soon be yeah, able I hope to put so. into practice in your own lessons. I'm, of course you will. Of course you will. I'm going to mute you now. And we are moving to Raul. Um, let's see if I can find uh, Raul quickly. I cannot see Raul in the list. Uh, if, I don't know if Raul is here actually because I don't think I've seen his name in the absentee list. Um, but we are moving ahead to somebody else. And if Raul comes into the classroom, uh, oh, you are here, Raul. So I cannot, I haven't been able to spot you. I think I'm getting as blind as a bat lately. Uh, but there we are now. So uh, microphone and webcam all yours, uh, Raul. So whenever you are ready for them, you can start the uh, stage. Stage is all yours. There so was that? <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, my name is Raul Oviedo, I'm from Madrid, uh, from Spain, and I'm starting here the master's degree as my peers. Well, I'm, today I'm going to talk about the edu educational project that I've created. Well, the objective of this project is working with English, with ICT and social science, uh, all of them at the same time. So the name of the project is uh, setting up your company okay and uh, one of the most important things is that all we want is make uh, students collaborate working in groups with different roles that we are going to give them and uh, the most important thing here is uh, giving them the opportunity uh, to collaborate uh, and to feel uh, the responsibility within within their groups well uh, another important thing uh, that, that I think um, students need to need to learn is the being available to work with missions. It means that they always know where they are. Well, if there are four missions and they are in the first step, they need to know what, what is the next step and uh, the objectives of each one. So, uh, first of all, the first mission uh, was aligned with Infodiographias as, as Carmen. Uh, Infodiographias is a blog where teachers can share their projects and they basically work with, uh, with online tools like Canva uh, and they make posters. So aligned with my project, the students were asked to to work with their features, with the with their uh, with their company's features, and they need to create a poster. Well, uh, the next step was uh, 
was uh, uh, yes. The next step, the second mission, um, we were working with with Daniel. You are going to see him later on, and uh, we were collaborating, uh, mixing our two projects. He was working with um, with healthy habits, and I was working with uh, with uh, setting companies. So we decided to create an advertisement where uh, children need to but need to advertise a product or something to keep us healthy. And as you can see in my in my blog in the Science Corner 93, we 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 actually create a, an advertisement where we were uh, advertising a hacky sack. Do you know hacky sack? Well. We were uh, we were making them uh, use uh, hacky sack to keep us healthy, and uh, well, all these super missions are carried out by the teacher. But the most important thing is give them freedom to to work by themselves. They need to to learn by by themselves. So if you have any questions, doubts, or any advices to me, just go to the science corner 93, and I will be there waiting for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I think you've done a great job. I do recommend you all to actually visit Raul's uh, learning diary because he's got a great elevator pitch there. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, things that they had to do in these open educational projects when they were actually crafting them was to uh, try and sell their open educational project to be to other people, any other teachers worldwide. So they had to draft and design an elevator pitch and I think Raul... Yeah, we, we had a great time. I remember that. <laughs> you, you did, yeah, you did. And uh, it's, it's a really good job, yes. Apart Thank from you. that, you are going to be listening to other peers as well mm -hmm. who have also created not only um, awesome elevator pitches, uh, for the uh, um, open clip projects, but also learning missions that involve uh, video clips um, that I think you are going to enjoy. Not only because of the amazing uh, final output, but also to realize about how much effort and time these uh, beginner teachers have invested in, uh, in their crafting, in their learning journey. Uh, if some of you may um, right on the chat box. Um, oh yes, we will add all the links to all the learning diaries, yes, and in their learning diaries in Moodle MOOC 10, uh, you can uh, directly visit their links to all their products, outcomes, and, and open educational projects. But if in the meanwhile some of my beginner teachers can uh, please key in, write the URLs of some of those uh, video trailers and elevator pitches, I think uh, the invites will also appreciate it because some of them are really, really, really nice. And all of them have been um, uh, crafted with lots and lots of care. So let's go to Leah now who is already waiting there in the conference and he, and he is our next beginner teacher who is going to share his learning experience. There we are. So. Hello, Hello. Here and uh, ahead. Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Lier Moreno. I'm uh, studying at the uh, University of Rey Juan Carlos. I'm actually studying a uh, bilingual master's. So I would like to briefly summarize my experience along the subject of ICT and what I have been doing. Uh, first of all, we start getting in touch with uh, social media, as, such as Facebook and Twitter, to spread our work and our uh, projects. And lately, we start uh, creating and developing uh, a blog in which we had to um, spread all the the tasks that we that uh, we had to do and that we had to develop. And uh, Thanks to this blog, I got the chance to uh, get in touch with a, a CLIL educational project and we firstly uh, start analyzing this kind of project and in order to 
see the uh, to have an idea of what they consist on and we also uh, use uh, online tools that help us uh, developing our uh, different projects and tasks for example i use pix for learning um, genially to create slideshows presentation in order to review different uh, clear projects and also picture chat to create a uh, um, very powerful uh, visual metaphors to help us uh, spread in our works and our projects and then i decided to start developing an educational project called the dinosaurs world because i thought it would be uh, very interesting and appealing to to children in the natural science class uh, along this educational project they will have to accomplish uh, a final task which consists on recording on a small documentary talking talking about uh, any type of uh, dinosaurs they would like to to present to their classmates so it's a uh, very interesting interactive and uh, i think uh, exciting uh, project for them and then we were asked to transform this educational project into a collaborative educational project so uh, I decided to get in touch with Trima6, that is an online platform that are actually developing uh, iBooks, eBooks, uh, with the collaboration of different uh, professionals on, along the world. So uh, my idea was to uh, create a small eBook in which uh, children themselves got the chance to participate in the elaboration of this. Uh, this uh, uh, online book and so they uh, also can uh, upload uh, their the videos they have been uh, preparing for their own classes with the supervision of a teacher for example and so uh, i started uh, developing this uh, collaborative project just a few weeks ago and i hope it uh, have a uh, we had a uh, success succeed and uh, and that's uh, my contribution for today i hope you you enjoy and or any comments come to my blog and uh, without a doubt uh, email me thank you so much thanks ever so much leo for such a nice contribution uh and thank you very much for all the effort um that is uh, uh, very nice. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to mute you now. Sorry. And uh, uh, we are going to move to uh, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is a really great blogger. Um, she has, um, I think, um, crafted it maybe it may be one of the most attractive learning diaries all along the master's degree. She's a very sweet girl and she's already saying hello. So please go ahead, Rebecca, and welcome. We cannot hear you. Sorry. Sorry, Rebecca, we cannot hear you. I think you might have an issue with your audio settings. Uh, try to fix it and uh, meanwhile I'll move on to somebody else. I will go back to you when um, you let us know that your issues with the audio uh, have been fixed, okay? Uh, Laura Garrido is there already waiting, and uh, uh, that's not that's not the Laura I was waiting for. Sorry, uh, we got another uh, Laura. Uh, there you are, Laura. I just found you. I spotted the other Laura first. Okay, but uh, Laura Garrido is another of, of our beginner teachers who's worried about the environment and has focused her clear open educational project on being environmentally friendly. There we are. So she is going to explain it much better than me. All yours. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Leo. Um, 
Hello, my name is Laura and I'm a pre-primary teacher from Madrid in Spain, currently studying a master's degree in bilingual education. Today I want to explain to you my experience about the ICT work. My trip begins with a learning diary and a Twitter account. We were asked for achieving some challenges and we started with the basic tools, a blog in which we posted everything we were learning and a Twitter account in order to spread our work. We, as far as my experience is concerned, it has been very enriching for me because I have realized that there are many innovative ways to teach our students. Furthermore, we have had the opportunity to create our own open educational projects and to collaborate with uh, other virtual communities. I would like to highlight the process through which I have created my educational project. First of all, before taking the first approach to my lesson plan, I analyzed an open educational project from the internet in order to see the, many, the main characteristics, proposals and other tasks that we can find in this kind of project. After that, I created my prototype of the project I wanted to carry out, which is called People and the Environment. By filling a template with the most important aspects, we have must uh, we must take into account when planning a lesson, for example, contents, objectives, uh, uh, sessions, activities, etc. Once I had the idea in my mind, I took the next step, which was enriching my project. I decided to make it more social and include three different ways of collaboration. Within the classroom, through cooperative learning, because students in groups will have to do a research and create a presentation. Collaboration out of the classroom, connecting with other classes or communities and share opinions through a learning diary. And then collaboration back to the classroom, taking into account the external agents in order to provide a meaningful and real learning. Then I wanted to be part of other collaborative projects and I decided to join the 30 Goals Challenge by Shelly Sanchez Terrell since they encourage a movement to transform the way of teaching in which ICT and innovative methods are very important. Moreover, I wanted to focus my sessions on Blog and Reflect Challenge. Next, as I was involved in enriching my educational project, I also decided to enrich the activities by turning them into super learning missions for students to be motivated and interested in their learning. The first super learning mission is called Blogging My Knowledge, in which students have to do a research about the topic by groups, and then they have to post the explanation in their learning diaries. With this super mission, students will collaborate within the classroom in small groups. The second super learning mission is called Becoming Teachers, in which students with a new tool called Genially for preparing a wonderful and interactive presentation for the rest of the class. With this activity, we are not going to work only on collaboration within the classroom, but also outside the classroom through recording a video and posting it in their learning diaries. Finally, as in every lesson plan, we have to assess our students and for that we have to create an assessment rubric, which is very useful not only for us, but for parents and for students to know what is going to be evaluated. For doing so, I took into account the main aspects of the learning process, such as uh, writing and oral skills, content, the visual support, group work, and critical thinking. Then I defined clearly the criteria of, where, of each specific aspect, including a scale of ratings. And that's all very briefly, and you can find more information about it in my blog, Beyond Books and Chalks, and you can contact me on Twitter at laugari2894. Thank you. Okay, hey, Laura, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, talking about this genially uh, tool that Laura was mentioning, I've uh, I've just um, placed it for you on the chat. This Genially tool is free, uh, and it's a very nice uh, tool for interactive slideshows, but also for lesson plans, uh, just in case you are interested. Um, and uh, on top of that, they also have a 
the uh, chance to become an ambassador and they give you the premium license also for free, just uh, um, asking from you to um, spread the word uh, sometimes at Twitter and to attend a webinar in which they show you how the tool um, actually works. Um, we have been very lucky in, uh, in our master's degree with Genially because um, uh, Scratch is great too. Yes, that's what Andrea is going to do now. We have been very lucky in our, in our uh, master's degree because when we started using uh, Genially for analyzing, for presenting the analysis of the um, CLIL projects that we were uh, evaluating for inspiration, um, we used Genially and they spotted us and they have actually uh, given us uh, the chance to become ambassadors. So we will soon have the online training by uh, Genially and uh, when that happens, uh, all my beginner teachers will have the free premium uh, license for life, which I think is quite good. I will write the URL in the chat box now for you while Andrea starts presenting because she's already there. With her. So, Andrea, all yours, please. Okay, so, um, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me well. And, sorry, if you can hear some noise from the outside, but there is some building blocks, um, so there's nothing I can do. I'm Andrea. And I would like you to uh, I would like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity and for your attention in advance. Uh, during my career, I've studied this uh, subject, but um, this year I've learned a lot of things um, related to ICT that I can use in the class. I believe that ICT should be included in the classrooms. And this year, the subject has helped me to generate a project uh, that I'll be able to use in the future. So for me, it has been great. This year, as part of the master's degree, I've opened my learning diary. And also, to tell you the truth, the first Twitter account I've ever used, because I get one many years ago, and then I never use it. The learning diary consists of the missions and following different steps. I think that to create an ICT project is difficult and if it's divided into steps, um, it's uh, easier to deal with. The first mission I did, as you can see, was the flip introductions, where I introduced Miter, one of the colleagues in the masters. That was a good idea. Not only for us, I believe that uh, flipped introductions are also good for the students, but uh, it can help them to introduce each other and to learn more about their colleagues and their peers. Then, as you can see, we analyzed an open educational project to see its strengths and weaknesses. And this helped us to bear in mind what we really want our project to have and things that um, we appreciate to see so that uh, we learned it was not useful and we excluded from our project. The next mission I did, as you can imagine, was prototyping my own educational project. For this specific mission, I decided to base my project on Scratch Junior, which uh, it's an application where students can create their own stories and apps, and it's an easy version of the programmation tool, and that gives learners the opportunity to work with almost every single subject programming their own apps. For this purpose, I create an elevator pitch and a visual metaphor to spend and to share it with the world. After doing it, I look for partners to collaborate with. Because I want my uh, project to be collaborative, and it was at the beginning collaborative uh, within the class. But after all, I decided that it was great if it can be uh, expanded to outside. 
So um, I looked for partners and I decided to collaborate uh, with the same one Anna um, have chosen, which is Don't Tell Me Stories, Draw Them. And now I'm creating the two super learning missions. Um, I um, have to say that the work they are doing now uh, is uh, that, um, well, they believe that teaching through drawing and creating uh, creates a creative connection that helps uh, the students to learn better than memorizing. So uh, it has helped me because uh, my project was based on a scratch. This way they can um, add their pictures and drawings. They can also add a story and also because it has given me the content because uh, to create the two super learning missions, I've collaborated with Anna, which uh, already has the content about nutrients in food and also about um, the digestive system at the, and the escritory one. She has already uploaded the project. So if you're curious about, please check her blog and I'll be posting it during this week, just for you to know. Uh, if you want to collaborate or just give suggestions, please don't hesitate to visit my blog. And as I said before, thank you for the opportunity and I hope you are enjoying my colleague's presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, your, uh, I'm going to mute your mic now. Uh, your uh, volume was so high uh, that we couldn't really spot very well what you were actually saying clearly, but um, it, um, it, it is a very good job. It is, it is a nice job, and uh, uh, Andrea is very creative. Um, a shame that we couldn't, at least not me, I couldn't hear you very well. Um, we've got another Anna now. Anna is here already waiting. Uh, she is also a very, very, very good crafter with uh, ICT challenges and clear challenges and um, her uh, learning diary is worth seeing. If you have a look at the title, title Making Innovation Happen, you are already realizing that she is a genuine innovator. So uh, please, uh, Anna, all yours. Thank you for coming. Hello, hello, everybody. So uh, hello, I hope you hear me clearly. Uh, my name is Anna Marquez, and since I was a child, I knew I had to study education. Uh, I strongly believe that education is one of the most powerful uh, tools for changing the world. And for this reason, I promise to do my best so as to assist in creating a fire society. I grew up in Benidorm, which is a city in the eastern Spain on the Mediterranean Sea. And I studied my teaching degree at the University of Alicante. Currently, uh, I am studying a master's degree in bilingual education uh, at the University of uh, Rejon Carlos. As I have already mentioned, I strongly believe in the power that education has in society. Uh, so we, as teachers, should provide our students with tools that make them free individuals, and ICT are one of these tools. Hereafter, I'm going to share with you my experience uh, through ICT, uh, through this ICT subject during this master's degree, and how important I think information and communication technologies are for education. When we started the subject, uh, I, I had basic knowledge about using ICT at school. Of course, I knew digital boards, uh, different web pages to create motivating activities and games, but I was not aware of the wide range of possibilities that ICT offers. One of these possibilities is learning diaries. Uh, I opened mine, uh, you can visit me at makeinnovationhappen.blogspot.com, and I started to share my knowledge with uh, the world. Learning diaries have the advantage of allowing students to reflect on the knowledge they have acquired and at the same time that they share the knowledge with other pupils around the world. If you visit my blog, uh, you can see that I have published uh, different entries regarding different challenges 
that I had to accomplish uh, three to a three-to-one interview, an analysis of an open educational project, the creation of my own open educational project, or the searching of collaborative movements to join are some examples of the posts that I have already published. I would like to emphasize uh, two of them because I strongly believe that they, are, that they have been very useful uh, for my future teaching practice. Uh, firstly, I'd like to talk about my third entry titled as a clear educational project, Namaste, which is a respectful form of greeting in India. And in that challenge, I had the mission to create my own open educational project and to share it with the readers of my blog. Creating a motivating open educational project, it is not an easy task. And I had, to th I had to think about it long and hard, but fi finally I designed it, and I now, now I can affirm that I am pretty satisfied with the work that I made. As I have uh, already mentioned, my open educational project is called Namaste, and it is intended for six graders in primary education. It is about uh, Indian culture and Indian traditions, and for that reason, we can place it in the history subject, even though it is preferred to be a cross-curricular project. If you visit my blog, uh, you will see a presentation that prototypes it, because, of course, it is ready for you to modify all the features you like so as to fit with your students' needs. The second challenge that I want to highlight is the one called uh, Let's Find a Partner. On that post, uh, I reflected about collaborative education. Collaborative education is a method in which pupils team together to solve a problem or create a meaningful project. According to Gok Hay, individuals are able to achieve higher levels of learning and retain more information when they work in a group rather than individually. So this applies to both the facilitator of the knowledge, the, instructor, the instructors, and the receivers of the knowledge, the students. At that point, I decided to join Infoedugrafias. Infoedugrafias uh, is a collaborative project for infant, primary, secondary, and university students. The main aim of this project is that pupils create an infographic relating to any topic, uh, for instance, uh, the plot of a book, or the part of the plants, or an important event in history. All infographics created by the students will be published on the web page so as other pupils can benefit from the work. I strongly recommend you to visit their blog, infodografias.blogspot.com.es, and if you consider yourself as an innovative and creative teacher, do not hesitate on joining that movement. I am pretty sure that your students will have fun at the same time that they are learning new content. To sum up, I would like to say that I strongly believe that ICT allows broadening the walls of a classroom and it allows uh, taking learning into more context. So teachers do not be afraid of using them in your lessons. Uh, thanks for watching and for any suggestions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Anna has uh, uh, done a very, very good job and uh, she's a very solid worker. And so is Christina, who is uh, a very nice garden girl. She's, uh, he's already come in, I think. Um, I think I've seen you, Christina. Is that you on the yes. roll? Yes, there you are. Okay, so welcome, all yours. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christina, and I am a pre-service preschool teacher, currently studying this Master's of Bilingualism at Rey Juan Carlos University in Madrid. Nevertheless, the project I'm presenting tonight is for primary levels. And before going deep into my open educational project, I would like to thank my teacher, Maria Jesus, for all her support, patience, and uh, the knowledge shared with us. As some of my classmates have said, 
at the beginning of this subject, we uh, were so lost about how to use ICT in class because sometimes you think that you know a lot and then you suddenly realize that all you know is less than 5% uh, of what is already there for you. And this is what happened to me at the beginning of this course. As a teacher, I have learned that you never have to take things for granted and that you never know everything. Besides, I wasn't aware enough of the power of ICT tools for engaging children and motivating them to learn. Designing an open educational project is not something that you can do in one day, and not even in two. The reason is that you need to have certain background knowledge that allows you to create a whole project and carry it out, especially if it is a collaborative e-project. As you can see in the first in the first image of my slide, my process of learning has been quite interesting and it has rather gradually increased the difficulty. The most remarkable thing is that before I start working on my own project, I analyzed one already done by the National Center of Spain for Curricular Developing of non proprietary Systems. And that was a solid grounding that allowed me to start prototyping and working on, on my own project. Apart from that, you might also have noticed the amount of ICT tools used during this process of learning. Now it's time to talk about my collaborative project called The Weather. It has been taught for second graders and I have to say that I'm still working on it. It consists of several super learning missions where the students will work on their own, acquire, acquiring the necessary knowledge to overcome the final outcome. This knowledge refers to describing the weather using specific data, explaining the causes of certain atmospheric phenomena, comparing the changes of the weather across the seasons as well as among different countries and making predictions. Apart from that, they will be collaborating with other partner schools from Europe, sharing the weather and with the ESL Times Open Educational Project where we all together will write a post and on what we are doing. As far as the final product is concerned, my students will have to use a digital map previously made by them to record a TV forecast program in the class. They will work in groups of four and five students. Finally, regarding the assessment, its mission has its own rubric to evaluate the students' work, and there is another important part of self-reflection in a blog run by the teacher, which is me, as well as a one, uh, a one, another important part of self-assessment. I don't want to forget to mention that this is a clear open educational project, what means that every mission will consider language and content all integrated and planned under the four C's of CLIL framework. And that is all. You can follow me on Twitter or visit my blog for detailed information. And thank you so much for this short presentation. Oh, thank you very, very much, Christina. She's so sweet. Thanks, thanks a bunch for your words and uh, for your presentation. I'm going to hide you now, and uh, Alvaro is there. Alvaro is bound to be very famous uh, very soon on on iTunes because he's going to be part of um, a free iTunes. Um, ebook that he is going to tell you about. So, all yours, Salvador, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alvaro Anton Perez, and as my colleague Anna, I am from Benito too, and now I am studying a bilingual master's degree at the University of Rey Juan Carlos of Madrid. 
And I would like to start from the beginning. When I started to study the teaching degree four years ago, I decided that I wanted to teach in a different way. Here in Spain, most of the schools are obsessed with textbooks, and the only thing that teachers do is follow the book. In my teaching degree, I decided my ideology, that is, getting away from textbooks. Because I believe that there are hundreds of possibilities to teach children without using a book. Since that moment, I started to investigate some teaching possibilities, and the one that I like most is literacy. In other words, teaching a curricular subject through a picture book. And that is the reason why I cannot leave a bookstore without buying a picture book. Now that I am studying this master's degree, I have learned a lot about how to teach children in other ways, and thanks to this ICT course, I have learned that nowadays there are some schools that are using ICT to teach their students. In this ICT course, I created an open educational digital project called Horton Hears a Who. With this project, I pretend to teach the animal kingdom using just a children's book and, and the ICTs. Thanks to this project, I realize that nowadays there are some worldwide, worldwide projects working for teachers to collaborate with. From my point of view, these projects are awesome for teachers to change education once for all. In my open educational project, I collaborated with the Twima project that consists in creating a book with the app Book Creator and share it with the world this book that will be the final outcome. The book will be available in iTunes in a few weeks from now, and my final outcome of this Open Educational Digital project, it is the creation of a book where the students has to reflect all their learning process. I created this final outcome, but as a teacher, I thought, how can I improve this book that I have created? So, I asked my scout kids to record for me the audio of the book in order to improve my collaborative work and to give the world something created by kids to kids. Another super learning mission that I have created in this course consists in connected uh, le learning. I think that connect uh, le uh, the teaching learning process is the most important basis of our as, as, as teachers. So we have to connect what we learn in one subject to another to try to not see that the things that we are studying are isolated. To conclude, I would like to say that thanks to this ICT course and all the teaching learning process, I have learned how to be a teacher, and I always wanted to be. And what is more, this course has given me the strength to continue my ideology to become the teacher that I always wanted when I was a primary kid. So, thanks for watching me, and do not miss anything of my further works, and follow me for 65. And follow my blog, Getting Away From Textbooks. And as today is the Star Wars Day, may the Force be with us as future teachers. <laughs> I'm so proud, Alvaro. Uh, that has been great. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, may the Force be with you too. Um, but I don't know why, exactly in the same way as Star Wars has a day, uh, teachers have a day, and however, we never uh, sort of use hashtags so as to show to others how proud we are of being teachers. I think we should uh, set up a hashtag such as proud of being a teacher or teachers pride or something exactly the same way as other um, uh, fields of other walks of life have their own hashtags, I guess. Thanks ever so much. I'm going to hide you now and we are moving to uh, Lucia there. Lucia is already waiting for us, I think. Um, so, I, I, I know that I've seen you. Uh, there we are. I've just, a, just a spotted you, Lucia. Okay. So, yes, yes. Proudly a teacher, Neva says. Hello, Lucia. Hi. Very nice hair too. <laughs> All yours. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lucia Carrasco, a clear primary teacher to be. I'm from Madrid, and like my colleagues, I'm studying a master's degree in bilingual education at the University of Juan Carlos in Madrid. 
So during this uh, speech, I'm going to talk about my experience throughout this ICT course. So firstly, let me tell you that I'm going to talk about the main posts that compose my learning diary called see you later uh, collaborator.blogspot.com in order to explain the challenges that I had to overcome throughout all these course. So let's get the ball rolling. Uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about the CLIL Private Detective Challenge in which I had to analyze an open educational project by using a checklist with all the essential elements that a golden standard open educational project should have. Uh, in this case, I decided to analyze one from FedEx that is called My Town since it contained all the essential elements and also it provided us with um, the didactic guidelines too. I have to say that um, this challenge was quite important for me since it helped me to uh, have a wider understanding of what a uh, uh, project-based learning and also what um, open educational project is about. So. This challenge uh, leads me to the following one um, that is called prototyping an open educational project. In order to start creating it from scratch, I was provided with a template to design it. And I decided to call, uh, to call it the weather forecasters since students will have to create a weather forecast, a special weather forecast as, as the final outcome. This uh, project, my project, um, is uh, intended for fourth graders of primary education. It integrates social science, natural science and ICT, as well as cooperative learning and rewarding with badges. So, due to the fact that I wanted to reward my students with budgets, I had to look for a partner, a collaborative partner, so off I went and I decided to go for the 30 goals challenge, particularly for the uh, design to patch one, since uh, this uh, goal consists in uh, rewarding students with badges. And since my, in my project, students are going to be assigned different roles, I want to reward them with badges too. Uh, once I had my, 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 a potential partner, I had to turn uh, flat activities into super learning missions. This was uh, the, the next uh, challenge. And in order to do so, I had to create a flat activity, for instance, uh, just an exercise from a book uh, that consisted in just writing uh, charts from uh, with the theory. And I uh, transformed it into a super learning mission. Uh, in so doing, I decided to join two of my, of my colleagues, Ana Marquez and Carmen Olmedo, so as to compile all our projects as well as the collaborative movements that we were looking forward to participate. And um, while doing so, I have to say that this was uh, an amazing uh, experience since I learned from both uh, Carmen and Anna a lot, and also because we were actually collaborating, and also we put ourselves into um, our students' shoes. So I think that it was a great idea to, to create these super learning missions um, together. Um, we created a sample of the artifact uh, of these super learning missions that were an infographic that uh, was a comic, and also a video. So if you want to know what happens when a tourist, a climate advocate, a flora detective and a producer meet, please do not hesitate to visit my blog because there you will see um, our video. Well, after having designed these uh, super learning missions, it was time to create an assessment, a rubric for assessment. And in this case, I decided to create one for me and other, another for our uh, students, so that also they um, are able to to think about their their learning and to self reflect. 
and I decided to focus this rubric on my on the final outcome that the students have to overcome. That is the special weather forecast. Um, well, uh, all in all, I have to say that this ICT course. Uh, really made me think long and hard about the use of ICT in the classroom, uh, not only in order to develop digital skills, but also to promote thinking skills, to develop language skills, to promote autonomy. And I'm so glad I um, did this, this course because I learned lots of tools, a scores of tips that I'm looking forward to, to putting them into practice in my future classrooms. Uh, so uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention. And later, collaborator. I'll see you later, Lucia. Thanks ever so much for your work and for the delivery, too. That was very, very nice. I'm going to hide you now, and I'm going to try and spot Blanca, who is already waiting for her turn. So, see if we can see Blanca soon in the screen. Um, Dr. Nelly and Niva, oh, Blanca is there. Then I will tell you about that a bit later. Blanca, please. All yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Blanca Garcia, and I'm from Murcia, a city in the south of Spain. And nowadays, I'm studying a master's degree in Madrid. Uh, I'm going to talk about the project that I can be uh, carrying out during the second fourth month period of the master's degree based on bilingual education. Uh, this project has been done for the subject ICT. And we have created a learning diary when we have posted all the challenges that we had to complete. Uh, these challenges are analyze and evaluate an open educational project, make a prototype of our own clear educational digital project, design a visual metaphor, partner church, turn plan activities into super learning missions, and design an assessment rubric. Uh, now uh, I would like to uh, briefly explain these challenges and what I did in, in each of them. Uh, first of all, uh, we started analyzing and evaluate an open educational project. Uh, our teacher provided us with some links of different educational projects, and we had to choose one of them. And using a digital tool as genially, uh, we had to analyze this project. In my case, I chose clear teaching projects. And basically, we had to talk about key knowledge, understanding and success skills, challenging problems or questions, sustained inquiry, authenticity, student voice and choice, reflection, critique and revision, and public credit. Uh, secondly, it arrived the first contact with our clear educational digital project, doing a prototype of it using a template. And then we had to make a video or an audio where we had to explain, where we had to explain our project in detail. Uh, I used the tool YouTube to upload the video to the internet. Uh, my open educational project name is Let's Buy Some Clothes, and it's about clothes and action. And this educational project is for first graders. Uh, thirdly, uh, we had to design a visual metaphor. Uh, what we have to do was to turn our open educational digital project into a collaborative one. Uh, I have created a poster using the tool Canva, where I expose to a student the topic of a debate, uniform versus, versus non-uniform. And the idea that I have uh, was to uh, have a connection between two different schools, a private one and a state school, and then the teacher from the schools have to assign pairs. One child from the private school uh, will write to one child from the state school and vice versa. And they will sign emails between them to discuss about the topic. All this activity will be under teacher supervision. And once they have a conclusion, they will share with the classmate in front of the class. Uh, fourthly, it's time to look for a partner to participate with. And I have chosen Tertulias con Sabra Chocolate, what in English would be something similar to 
talks with chocolate taste. Uh, the reason is because this project has the aim to encourage uh, the dialogue among all members of the educational community, community to reflect, grow, and introduce improvement and new projects. Uh, fifthly, it's about turn flat activities into super learning missions. And we have to change two flat activities and publish it in two different posts. In the first one, the flat activity was the typical one that the students have to describe themselves. And what they have to do is, first of all, create a superhero avatar and then change their clothes. Uh, they have to use a digital tool as small. And in the second activity, they have to create a digital fashion catalog. And to relate these two activities with the collaborative project, uh, Talks with the Chocolate Taste, I have done a group dynamic at the end of each activity called uh, La Madeja de Lana, that in English is the skin of wood. And finally, I have created a rubric to evaluate the first super learning mission using the, the digital tool, uh, tool, quick rubric. Uh, all in all, uh, thanks to this subject, we have learned a lot of our digital tools that we can use with our students in our future jobs. And if you want to read more about my prayer or asking me something, you can contact with me in my blog or follow me in Twitter. In Twitter. Sorry. Uh, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Blanca. That was very, very nice. Um, her um, project uh, and, and her um, learning missions for uh, the clothes catalog are actually, um, have actually quite a lot of potential for emotional intelligence and emotional education too. And the link with uh, the Choco Talks is very good. She has not still held the uh, live Choco Talk that she has to, in order to link and contribute to the Choco Talks um, project, but I'm sure when she actually finds the time to do it, it is bound to be um, the perfect match. And I also do recommend you, Blanca and the rest, to follow the link that Dr. Nelly is sharing in the chat box about the free Second Life MOOC in June. Uh, which you are bound to love, I'm sure. So I am hiding Blanca now, and we are going for another Laura that we've got waiting. Uh, she's been waiting for a while, I think, now. Uh, see if I can spot her, uh, because she doesn't seem to be in anymore. Uh, Laura, if you are there, and it is just a question of being as blind as a bat, uh, please um, say so. If I cannot, yes, you are there, Laura. Yes, now where you are, I will find you in a sec. I hope, I hope that I will find you in a sec. Um, let me go a bit. Let me scroll a bit um, and see if I can find you um, because I saw you. Before, yes, here you are. I just found you, <laughs> Laura. So, my yes, the webcam is there for you. Hello, all yours. Can, can you hear me? Perfectly OK. OK. So, hello, everybody. My name is Laura, and as same as my partner, I am studying a bilingual master in Rey Juan Carlos University here in Madrid. I'm from Santander. And I think that ICT are very important in our daily life. For that reason, this subject allowed me to know much more about technology and how can we develop them in a school uh, with children. I would like to spend this minute telling you how were my experience with this subject and how I have fulfilled all the challenges that appear in our model. I have to confess that the first time I saw this platform full of challenges, I feel a bit lost and I didn't know many of the tools that appear on it, but step by step I were taking risks and achieve my goal, achieving my goal. Um, I start by opening a new blog and I think that the link will appear in the chat later so you can check it out. I have much trouble finding a suitable title for my blog, but finally 
I do uh, learning by experience. This title fits very well with the purpose of my blog because it is a reflection of my work done in, in this subject in, in classes. We have been experimenting and learning new things at the same time, so I thought that this was an appropriate title for my learning diary. Once I have my blog open, the next step was open a Twitter account to spread my work and my blog entry. This challenge was the easiest one for me because uh, I'm familiar with this social network as you uh, before, and uh, we um, use Twitter to publish new entries of our learning diary and for being in contact uh, with each other and with the education community. After that, we became fully involved in our educational project. The first step was to look for one uh, open educational project to analyze. Our teacher, Maya Jesus, provided us with many projects, but I decided to analyze one of a via entitled My Town. I found this project very interesting since they work using many challenges as we were doing in class, so it inspired me to prototype my own open educational project. I have to admit that I never see this type of methodology in which students have to achieve many goals in order to get a final outcome, and I found it very innovative and interesting for, for children. And once I've analyzed the EDIA project using a general presentation, uh, which you can see in my blog, Learning by Experiencing, the next step was to prototype my own open educational project. I first, I felt a bit anxious about it because I didn't know how to start. Nevertheless, it was much, much easier than I thought because we have to fill a template, which you can see also in my blog, explaining all our methodology, goals, tools, and assessments. I decided to prototype a project about prehistory for four graders called Living in the Prehistory. It consists of a variety of tasks that the students have to achieve in order to do a final outcome in which they have to record a video clip as if they were living in that period of time. Accordingly with this, I record my own video to explain my project which is published in my, in my blog. Then we have to create a visual metaphor of our project using an online tool. I choose Canva to do that, since I found it interesting and easier than the other one. I try to be creative and did my best to explain the main reason for my project in this kind of flyer. And finally, when I got it, I expressed it to my learning diary and Twitter explaining all the process. Once I had the visual metaphor done, I began to search partners to start my project in popular, collaborative one. I realized that collaboration is very important in order to achieve common goals and develop social skills in our students. So, start my activities in collaborative one was easier for me since I'm accustomed to working teams. After being looking for the best collaborative movement, I decided to join the ELS time. Uh, so in the web and uh, in the Twitter, you can see that they are a collaborative movement who works on activities which involve like, the four skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. They work also with ICTs as me, so in my mind, they were the best partners to I record an elevator speech, which is a 20 second video, to combine them to join my project. Finally, we learn to turn class activities into different learning missions, as my uh, peer said. I choose two simple activities of my project to turn into super learning missions in which students can learn by experience. I decided to do a comic with uh, them using Picture, which is an enjoyable online tool to do uh, this kind of work about one uh, topic. In my case, it was the prehistory. This time, a student in Perth have to make their own comic to explain one prehistory uh, pre period of time instead of only do a description of it. When they got this comic ready, they will make a player using Canva, for example, to spread their video clips to the rest of the students. In this player, they have to announce their final artifact so everybody can see it. The final task we had done related to our open educational project uh, was make a rubric to assess uh, all the projects on super learning missions. And I, I have explained also the, all the process in my learning diary. And finally, we are fi finishing our, uh, our ICT subject doing this online presentation. I felt a bit nervous about it, but I'm very happy to share my subject. Make me more 
confident with myself and I learned so much about online tools and networks. I would like to point out that I'm very proud of my progress, which I never thought I could do it. So thank you to my teacher, Maria Jesus, <laughs> for being a guide in all this pro process. So here I conclude with my experience in this subject, and I hope I have not been too boring, and thank you for your attention, and goodbye. If you have any doubts, uh, you can go to my Twitter, my learning diary. So that's all. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. Um, all these congrats that you are giving to me, um, for all the rest of you, uh, Dr. Nelly Nivers and all the rest of the attendees, uh, I think you must know that the scores and final grades have not been published yet. And uh, I'm afraid all these lots and lots of acknowledgments and thank you things are due to that fact. I'm, I'm joking. I do appreciate that you uh, reckon the work and I do reckon your effort uh, too. Um, thank you very much, Laura. I'm hiding you. Um, still, uh, we must move to Andrea now, who is somewhere waiting for us, I hope. Uh, Andrea, please, if you are there. Uh, yes, you are there, Andrea. I've just found you. So there we are. Um, the uh, master's degree is about to finish next week. Next week, uh, but the actual challenge of uh, being live at a conference is not finishing now. It is finishing when you uh, reflect on it in your learning diary. So it's not there. Um, we are not there yet. But uh, Andrea is here. Uh, ready to present her learning journey. So all yours, Andrea. Thank you. Andrea, can you hear, hear us? We can see you perfectly well, but we cannot hear you. So I am sorry, but I've got to move from you to the next person, see if you can uh, fix your issues. Uh, so we are moving to uh, Jesus now. I'm giving Jesus webcam and microphone. See if we can see you and hear you while Andrea tries and fixes her audio issues. The best thing to do in these cases it is to go out of the uh, chat room to out of the classroom and come back. Jesus, uh, I am passing webcam and microphone to you, uh, but uh, I don't see that you are accepting anything, so I'm sorry, but uh, I will have to move to somebody else if you are not there. Daniel, I'm going to try with Daniel now. Daniel now. Uh, there we are. So, Hello. Daniel, please. Hello. Okay. Uh, so I start? Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Marquez, and I'm studi studying a master's degree in bilingual education uh, in Madrid, like all my colleagues. Today, I would like to share with you my experience in the ICT class during the last few months. Uh, and I want to start by saying that I've learned many things related to ICT in general and with online tools in particular. So first of all, uh, we were in our in our ICT class. We were challenged to overcome different missions. Uh, the first thing we were suggested to create uh, an account in different social networking sites such as Twitter, and um, thanks to this, we have, at least me, we have learned how important it is to spread the word when you are looking for partners or when you want to share your work with, uh, uh, with other teachers. Uh, then we were, we were told to create a blog account e by using Blogger. By that, I have to say that by that time, when we created it, I didn't realize uh, why we were creating it. But then after a few days or weeks, 
I suddenly realized that it was going to be our learning diary and it was going to be the place where we would be sharing everything uh, as well as our, our evidence of learning. So you can have a look at it. Uh, if you click on the, on the address on my slide, and it's called 21st Century Teachers, and, and it's, uh, it's on Blogger. OK, and now I would like to, to talk to you about uh, my open educational project, which is called Live a Healthy Life. Uh, this open educational project uh, is going to encourage students to work collaboratively uh, through missions. So it consists of uh, five missions and a final task where, where students will have to collaborate uh, in groups uh, to achieve their, their objectives. So uh, thanks to this educational project, students will acquire uh, knowledge, knowledge in English as well as developing their ICT skills. Also, they will learn content uh, related to healthy lifestyles such as the food pyramid, uh, healthy dishes, the characteristics of food and other different things. Here, the most important thing uh, is that they will work in a way that, that they will realize they are working uh, with a purpose. So they will be creating different artifacts, and then all these artifacts will be published in the, in the classroom blog. Uh, I also would like to, to mention that I've joined a collaborative movement which is called Infodographias. And this is because Infodographias is a, is a website, collaborative movement, where students all over the world share their projects and throw infographics. And infographics is a kind of posters in which uh, in which we can uh, share information about a, a specific topic uh, with different visuals and, and, for example, pictures. OK, and I also would like to, to tell you that I've been collaborating with my peer, Raul Oviedo, uh, which is running the, who is running the blog, uh, The Science Corner, to create the final task. Uh, and in this time, task, students will have to, to advertise a company related to, to healthy food or a healthy habit. Uh, and I think that's all I have to say. I, I would like to thank you for inviting me here. And thank you. For Thank you very much, Daniel, for uh, being brief, concise, and uh, summarizing you your you. learning journey very, very well. I am glad uh, that you have had the full picture now. I know it is difficult. It was difficult at the beginning to make the yeah. pieces, uh, uh, see the purpose, and uh, make the pieces match. Yeah. But Thank I'm you. Glad that now uh, you have the whole picture. Good. Thank you very much. So I'm going to hide you now, and I'm going to move to uh, Paula. Uh, is Paula around? Um, let's see if I can. Yes, Paula, you are there. So, so um, OK, Paula, all yours. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Paula Esteban Lopez. I'm from Murcia. There I studied a degree on primary education. And now I'm finishing a master's on bilingual education here in Madrid. The ITP subject has taught me a lot of useful things that I'm going to explain in a moment. And the most interesting thing is that through all the activities we have made, I could have imagined the students in my class working cooperatively with the ITP. Nowadays, we as teachers have to promote the use of internet since our students born in the digital era so we can take advantage of this and make the best use of the computer and internet and their possibilities. 
the first thing we had to do was opening a learning diary and a Twitter account in order to publish there all our progresses and get in touch with our classmates and the educational community. Once we had the diary and the accounts on Twitter opened, we had to introduce our classmates. We did a fleet introduction in Perth with the aim to know our classmates and get in touch with the methodology of flipped classrooms, which consists of interact with course content and concepts outside the, of class time, leaving class time free for active learning activities. It has to be said that all the challenges we have been doing have to be published and reflect on our learning diaries. The next challenge was analyze and evaluate an open educational project. We had to, to choose among several clear projects and analyze the one chosen following a guide given and make a presentation with the two generally, that for the majority of, of us were a new tool. Doing this task, we were able to carry out the next, which was to prototype our own open educational project. My open educational project is about landscape, it is a content that, according to the curriculum, has to be covered in the second and third year of primary education. The final task is to create a postcard. Uh, the students have to draw it and describe the landscape they have drawn. The majority of the activities are designed to complete them in, in pairs or small groups, since I believe that work with someone else apart from you is very enriching. Once we have uh, design our open educational project, it was time to define a visual metaphor of how I was going to turn my project into a collaborative one. But before doing that, we should look for a partner. In other words, a collaborative project where our project will be accepted considering all the aspects that it involves. To let us know with to let us know, we have to record a video emphasizing the key points of our work using the elevator pitch technique. The blog chosen to collaborate with, with was the ESL Times, which main goals seem to fit with my open educational project. Uh, and last but not least, we have to turn flat and simple activities that students are tired of doing at a school into super learning missions. The first super learning mission I designed consisted on a travel agency. A student have to look for information to plan a travel to a natural place, and when they have all the information gathered, they have to design a flyer in order to promote it. The second super learning mission was totally different, since I did it with my classmate Maria Jesus. Maria Jose, because we have decided to collaborate with the same collaborative project. The first thing done was mix our topic, landscape and the weather, and think a possible mission that could be carried out, keeping in mind that this mission should have a connection with the real world and should draw the attention of the students. So the idea chosen was pollution, because this is a general term which involves the damage of the landscape and the change of the weather. Finally, to finish the challenge, we have to evaluate the learning mission creating a rubric where all the aspects that the students have carried out were taken into account. It has been a great experience to learn so much aspects of ICT in this subject and I'm sure I will apply all what I have learned in my near future as a teacher. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Paula. Sorry for the noise, I've got to hide you. Uh, because it's lots and lots and lots of natural noise. I don't know if it road works or whatever. But uh, thank you very much. It stopped now. We are moving to uh, Samia, who is there at the bottom of the list. Now, see if we can see Samia and uh, listen to her soon. So we are running out of time. We've been here for almost two hours. So. Um, Samia, I'm uh, passing your webcam microphone. Uh, I can see you are there on the um, attendees list, but uh, okay. So, Samia, all yours. Please go ahead. Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Samia. I have finished my degree in primary education. And now I'm currently studying a master's degree in bilingual education at the University of Rey Juan Carlos. 
Before starting to explain you my experience using ICT tools on my educational project, I would like to emphasize the importance of the use of ICT tools in teaching process, since these tools motivate the student in learning the content. And also, uh, they learn in a more visual and clear way. Before I started ICT classes, I had a basic knowledge of ICT tools. However, these classes allow me to discover and learn how to use different ICT tools and application that enable student learning. So now I can say that I'm aware of the power that has the use of ICT tools in education. As the rest of my classmates, I came here to talk about my educational project. And in order to be able to create my project, I have performed different challenges that guide me to design it. So to carry out all the challenges that I have done during the ICT classes, I create a learning diary in which I reflect each of the challenges that I have done, as well as the conclusion and self-reflections. So having said that, the first challenge we have done has been a flip introductions which aims is uh, to get to know our partner through several questions. Before creating my educational project, we analyzed and viewed different educational projects on different pages. So after analyzing them, the next challenge was prototype our own open educational digital project. So once I created my prototype, it was necessary to enrich it by turning my educational project into a collaborative one. So to make it collaborative, I focus on collaboration in the classroom through cooperative learning. For that reason, I turn all of my activities in order to encourage collaboration work. Then uh, to continue enriching my project, uh, the next goal was to be part of a collaborative project. Therefore, I decided to join Infoedografia since this project is focused on teaching and learning content through the use of visual resources such as infographics. Finally, to finish enriching my educational project, I changed all of my flight activities into super learning missions in order to do it more attractive and motivating for students. So now I would like to talk about uh, my project. So the content that I work is the vertebrate animals. And this project is same at second graders. The areas that we will practice through this project are natural science and English. In each session, students will work collaboratively using different ICT tools to achieve every mission and challenge. On the other hand, the aim of this project is to take a closer look at different groups of vertebrate animals and see the characteristic that make animals different from each other. Another fundamental objective of my project is to allow students to use English and ICT in an engaging way and also prompt students to actively participate in each task. With my project, I want to enhance uh, the acquisition and learning of the content by using different visual resources that allows them to learn in an attractive and motivating way. For that, I make my missions uh, more encouraging, taking advantage of the use of ICT. Through the missions, students will learn how to manage information and how to use several applications to show what they have learned or search about the topic. For example, one of the learning missions of my project consists in the creation of a presentation in which they have to show the main characteristic of one vertebrate animal. And in order to do the mission, they have to use several applications such as importance of creating meaningful and motivating activities or challenges for students in the teaching learning. Sorry, Samia. Now we've lost you. Uh, you just got absolutely frozen and we, we've lost your voice. Uh, it, sorry about that because it was a very, very clear delivery and very, very solid. Uh, you did a good job. You tried. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Samia. We are moving to Miguel now. Uh, Miguel is there. Let's see if... Uh, if uh, um, 
There we go, Miguel. Yes, it's all yours, please. We can hear you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Miguel Montero. I'm a music teacher, and I'm currently studying in the Rey Juan Carlos University, uh, a master in bilingual education. Talk about education through ICT, my experience with this subject, and about my open educational digital project. First of all, I would like to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to participate in this conference. Um, at the beginning, I thought that ICT in the school would be something, something easy. I mean, if you know something about computers and education, uh, you're going to be an expert in ICT within the classroom. Uh, nevertheless, I've noticed that this is not true. Um, along these last four months, um, I have had the opportunity uh, to learn more about uh, ICT. I started uh, by, by doing easy tasks in relation with social nets, and I created my own blog and my own Twitter account, and yes, uh, I, I didn't have it. <laughs> but this was just the beginning, uh, because after that, uh, we continued doing several challenges. Um, each of one uh, was submitted in our blog and shared through Twitter. Personally, uh, I think that the inflection point was when I designed a prototype of my open educational project, because uh, after that, each talent had the aim of enriching this project. Now, I would like to talk about my open educational project, uh, which you can see on my blog, Education Loves Music. Its name is the European Continent. Uh, it's designed for third grades, and I have to confess that I loved it because maybe I, I have spent so much time and so many hours doing it. I have designed this project because I think that we are part of a great continent and we should know it better. Nowadays, we are all connected and we share so, so many things. I would like to share with you some useful keywords to understand and to define my project. Active, collaborative way, creativity, self-confident, English skills, global impact, school connection, new technologies, CLIL. To read the final outcome of this open educational project, I follow these steps. First of all, I analyze some big projects. Secondly, I design my own project. Then I share it uh, with the world looking for partners. And finally, I create my super learning missions. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about one of these super learning missions. Its name is Series Sounds. Uh, I chose this topic because years ago I saw it in an institute. I wanted to do it, but I never had the opportunity and I didn't know how to do it properly. All European countries have aspects that make them different from each other. It's landscape, relief, cities, monuments, food. Uh, but in every place we can also find different sounds which make it unique. For example, the sounds of a forest in Madrid are totally different from the sounds that we can find near of a Scottish cliff. Then, through these super learning missions, the students will be encouraged to record sounds of the nature around them. They can investigate about uh, what they want to record or the place uh, they have chosen after they will edit the recording using SoundCloud and they will submit the field in the web Nature Sound Map. Nature Sound Map is a collaborative project whose aim is to create a worldwide natural sound map. This project is done by professional nature recordists, although anyone, uh, anyone can participate. It's so, so easy to use it. To make this mission more globally, the students will be part of the e-training community. Uh, where schools of different countries create and share projects. Then uh, they will share the link of their sound with their school partner. I believe that this project is very attractive because students will learn how to use new tools and also they're going to create something that will remain forever. Uh, they will feel motivated uh, knowing that their work uh, can be seen by hundred or thousand or why not uh, millions, millions of people and I want to put into practice soon. Uh, summarizing, working is, is difficult 
because sometimes you don't know how to work with a new tool or you have to spend so much time sitting in front, in front of your computer but at the end when you see the results you feel proud. Uh, I encourage everyone to continue working and collaborating in the same way that I'm listening here today. Uh, thank you for listening to my speech. I remember you uh, to take a look at my blog and my Twitter account if you want to receive more information uh, about it. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you very much. Uh, I do encourage you to uh, join Moodle MOOC 10 when we finish the live session today because the campus on Moodle MOOC 10 is not going to be closed and it is a nice spot for all of us to keep in touch, to keep collaborating hmm. and to keep exchanging and it is a very, very good opportunity to also join other teachers worldwide. However, our online campus is going to close when your master's degree ends. Yes. So <laughs> if you join MOOC 10, you've got a new campus to keep it on. So I do encourage you to keep it up as well. Thank you. I'm going to hide you now. Thank you very much. Um, now, Irene is coming. Um, I don't know if Irene is still there. I know that. Yes, Irene, there you go. Hey, hello. Okay. Hello to everybody. You, hello, Irene. Can you please yes. lower the volume of your microphone? Yes, yes. Please. Now it's better? No, it's still very, very loud. Microphone. Just if you lower a little bit or if you separate it from your mouse. Yes. Now you can hear Try me. That. Okay, just to speak a little lower. Okay, thank you very much. All yours, dear. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Irene, and I'm doing a master's degree on bilingual education. I'm going to summarize my experience in ICT, and before presenti starting presenting my open educational project, I present Miguel, who was my partner at the introduction challenging, in which I talk about his studies, personal life, and professional life. On the second challenge, I analyze uh, click open educational resources, in particular the years of in the solar system from Rhea for click of uh, for click. I didactic unit for the grade, third graders from social science subject. Finally, I create a presentation about the project I analyze with Genially. My open educational project title is Living Things and Not Living Things. And I use Canva to represent it. To represent it. And it is for first graders. Uh, I mentioned many in, on, on my blog. It is mentioned many items to achieve the goals of the template. Uh, you can have a look at it. I choose cooperative work to turn my open educational project into a collaborative one. As the working groups, every child has a different role in the group. And so everybody has the role in the classroom. They are able to work in the following topic, living things and non-living things. Again, if you look at the blog, you can see the activities to work with uh, in a cooperative way. I turn it into a collaborative project using the media, and the teacher is the main responsible of... Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. After mentioning some of the media, Uh, that the, I will use, I develop visual activities. My project is, su I think, is suitable for the ESL times because uh, I like the educational techniques. For further information, you can watch my video, my elevator pitch. 
uh, it was not uh, another challenge is is to transform plant activities into super lab emissions. It was not easy to transform flat activities into super learning missions. I recycled ideas, materials to create a personal science book. And you can visit my blog and watch my video where I explain everything quite well. I did my personal book explaining this challenge, so why not to give the opportunity to be creative to children and stay tuned. Then, to transform flat activities into super learning missions, I create two mini pictionaries with a, with just the tool. And with digital artifact gister. And uh, I include uh, Every group has to elaborate complete and do the mini pictionaries. Children will practice vocabulary from the previous knowledge and they will add new images with this correspondent name to build a new knowledge. And to end, uh, and last, uh, you can see my blog, the assessment rubric, in which I assess instructions, the working groups, and so social skills and natural science book. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much, Chidene, for your uh, delivery. Thanks very, very much for the effort, Chidene. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm going to hide you now, and I'm moving to Marina. Um, Marina, are you there somewhere? Um, see if I can spot you. Um, there we are, Marina. I'm, I'm already giving you webcam and the uh, microphone. So all yours. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marina Sanchez Amores. I'm from Malaga. It's a city in the south of Spain. I'm a pre-primary teacher, and right now I'm studying a master's degree at Rey Juan Carlos University in Madrid. Firstly, I would like to say that for making my open, open educational project, I analyzed a project about London, which actually was for Tercero de la ESO. Tercero de la ESO is a, a course of second graders in, here in Spain. I like it very much, so I decided to adapt it to pre-primary, uh, which is what I have studied. So my open educational project is also about London. It's made for children from five to six years, which is the last course of pre-primary education. Its main objective, apart from learning about the city, is to show the students the importance of learning English. They are going to learn very basic things about London, like places and typical food. I've made some activities, which I'll explain them later. For carrying out my project, I've used uh, programs like Canva uh, for making a flyer. For making my presentation video, I use uh, Telagami. Once I finish creating my video, I upload it to my channel of YouTube. And for, for uploading my template, I use ISU. These, are pro these programs are very useful and they're very easy to use, so I really recommend them. Some activities that I would like to use with my students are uh, to observe through Google Earth where England is, and more specifically the City of London. Observe and discuss a PowerPoint about the city in a whiteboard, on the whiteboard. Uh, searching on a map of England where London is to spot it. Draw the flag of England uh, within a given rectangle. In a paper, prepare for it. Draw the favorite place seen on the PowerPoint and write the name with the help of the teacher, because they're very small. Uh, develop it uh, all together moral with some of the work undertaken. And last, um, what I find more important from my point of view is to provide my students uh, in having respect for other cultures and countries. According to my super learning missions, I've made a collaborative project with my classmate Beatrice Rincon, which is going to talk later uh, after me. Her open educational project is about healthy food for kids, so I've chosen her because I want to mix our projects and talk about the food in England and reflect um, on my students' healthy habits. Uh, my second learning mission is a storytelling about London. I've chosen storytelling because um, for my second mission, because uh, it's one of the favorite things of pre-primary kids. 
and the book shows and talks about the main monuments and places of the city. Lastly, I've created an assessment rubric in order to evaluate the students. In the rubric appears in a graded way all the points I want to evaluate. The students in pre-primary education normally are evaluated by direct observation of the teacher, but they will have to acquire some important aspects such as interaction with the physical world and social and communication skills. To finish, I would like to talk about my experience in the ICT subject. To be honest, I'm not very good at ICT, and the first day of class I was quite scared because I thought I wasn't going to be able to carry out this subject. Nevertheless, now I have to admit that, incredibly, I've learned a lot about this, this uh, subject. I'm looking forward to use this with my future class and my future students. This is the end of my presentation. My work and with people that have the same passion as education as me. Thank you, uh, Marina. I'm glad that you have uh, <laughs> finally decided to uh, use I in your own lessons. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, hiding you now and I'm moving on to um, Beatriz. Um, Beatriz, let's see if I can find you. Um, go to Beatriz. I don't know. I think this is yours. Is this, is this you? yours? Is this you? Yeah, that's your, uh, your project. So, all yours. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hello, everybody. I am Beatriz de Rincon. I'm studying a master's degree at Fray Juan Carlos University, and I'm going to talk about my open educational project, which is, which is called Habits of Healthy Kids. First of all, in order to start the project, I was analyzing another one, which is called I've Got a Pet by Mar Moreno in Uso de Recursos Educativos Abiertos. Uh, I have to say that this is a very complete and interesting project that has been my reference to do the mind. After doing it, I was ready to do my project, Habits of Healthy Kids. This is because I wanted my project to demonstrate the importance of a healthy lifestyle and to give guidelines to achieve it. At the same time, I want the brain to talk about other cultures and, of course, to improve English. The level is for, for grade of primary. It has eight, eight lessons according to the challenge I've created, uh, which are based on the lesson I want to teach in order to acquire, at the same time, the main goals, new concepts, improve English, and acquire important skills, because all of the challenges are focused uh, to improve their individual autonomy as well as basic social skills through group work using ICTs and, of course, English. Also, I have turned my open educational digital project into a collaborative one, which is very important because every person interested in taking part can participate. According to this, I have searched a partner to collaborate with. I have been uh, visiting blogs and finally I decided to collaborate with uh, the ESL Times because it seems me a very interesting blog uh, with a lot of different ideas and topics. But they were especially the main goals, the ones which made me decide for these goals, um, goal, goals such as writing, with the four language skills, using ICT when teaching or learning ESL or promoting collaborative work, teamwork, and autonomous work. Uh, my project has uh, very similar goals, so I decided this one. Even I have created an elevator pitch uh, to talk with them uh, that you can see on my blog. And of course, uh, I cannot forget to talk about the learning mission that I have created uh, to my project. Um, one of them is uh, My Beloved People, which is an individual activity that consists uh, on creating a poster, making avatars or uploading photos of the student's family or friends, and saying uh, the stage of life uh, they are in. They can use different web, to, uh, different, uh, web tools uh, to do it, uh, such, a picture, such as picture chart or Canva. The other activity is called Typical Foods Around the World, an activity group uh, where students have to create a comic talking about a typical food in a place and they have to create the recite. In this activity, they have, uh, they have to use an app called Fixstone to do the comic and the recite has to be handwritten because I want to integrate both ICT and paper and pen. 
Uh, finally, to assess all of these, I, I have done an assessment rubric uh, where appear all of the aspects that the students have to read about the content, the group and individual work, the design and the language. To conclude, um, I want to say that creating this open educational project is very useful. From my experience, I have noticed that is when you file, when you learn the most. Uh, this has been my case. I have had um, problems with the project, but finally here I am presenting my project to you, uh, to all of you, and, ref and reflecting about one idea. We as teachers have a very important task to collaborate among us, creating and sharing ideas, um, uh, or our own point of view, and so on, in order to give our pupils a good final product. And that's all. I hope you like it, my presentation. Beatriz, that was that was awesome. I I cannot um, let the moment pass without uh, sharing with everybody here that the first time. Beatriz was able to realize that when you embed HTML code <laughs> in a blog it's and true. you change the tab, uh, suddenly there is magic and you see a video embedded or an artifact embedded, she was actually jumping yes. uh, in class, uh, almost on the verge of happiness tears. And I can assure you it is 100% sure, true, because I've got the picture. <laughs> so uh, that kind of evidence, when you see that in class, uh, that's why we are teachers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thank you very much. Bye. I'm going to hide you now, Beatriz. Thanks a bunch. And um, Elena is coming now. Um, I, let's see if I can... Um, what Elena, yes, there she is. Uh, is uh, so, hello, Elena, welcome. The stage is all yours. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a primary teacher from Madrid, and now I'm doing a master's degree in bilingual education. Uh, I want to talk about my experience and some important things that I have learned during the subject. The first thing is challenge. We need challenge. We as a teacher and our students. And we have different learning styles. So we have to take it into account when we have to create activities, didactic units, or anything that we are going to apply with our students. Also, uh, Maya Jose taught me the importance of metacognition. We have to be conscious about our, our own learning. So I try to include self-assessment in the activities. And also critical thinking. And also we had to try to transmit our passion to our students, because in that way they are going to be motivated. And also it's so important to give them feedback. Maya Jesus is always giving us feedback. And it is important because it made me feel confident when I'm trying to do something. <laughs> And now I'm going to talk about my, my educational project. Uh, my, the name of my educational project is the story behind our works. Uh, I think that art is so important and we have to value our heritage. In my project, I'm going to try to explain the process behind some, uh, behind the creation of some sculptures. In that way, the students can realize that it's not as easy as nowadays, that we can create anything with ITC. But after, the process was so hard because sometimes they had to create something without half an image of it. So the first, the first learning mission is to create a, a story, a comic, that I'm going to collaborate with Infoedografia that my classmates had said before is a blog in which all the students can collaborate and upload some infographic with the information about history, about history science, social science, etc. And the second is about an interactive map with Google Maps in which all the students can leave a short uh, description about the sculpture and the exact location. In that way, they can 
learn more about other sculptures and not only about one. And why? Because it's important to understand the importance of the special uh, sculpture for society and culture. And in that way, I think that they are going to value the historic artistic heritage of the world. So this is my, my project. If you want to have a look, you can go to my, to my blog. And it's not already finished, but in two days, it will be all of it. And thank you for, and it was a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, I'm sorry I've got to hide you. Um, really sorry, but um, um, we are running out of time. We've been here for over two hours. Uh, Dr. Nelly has been extremely generous, giving us this chance. Uh, do not worry, the rest of you who have not been able to connect, uh, you can still accomplish the last challenge of the master's degree, which consisted not only of presenting, but also of reflecting on the experience and on Moodle MOOC 10, which you can join right now after we go and keep sharing. Thanks ever so much, Dr. Nelly, for the chance, as usual, um, and for your generosity. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you know, actually, it's it's more than thank you. It's 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 amazing, and um, you know, it's not enough. We'd like to go on, so which is why I decided to create a section for you, so you can go on, you can continue, you can reflect, um, hopefully, and um, this will just be the beginning of our collaboration, of course. So thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, see you on the Moodle. I'm adding the link once again. This was being recorded through Camtasia, and you'll be able to get the MP4 as well as um, the link to YouTube and Vimeo. So bye, everyone, and have a great weekend. Thank you, Maria.